It's been a long day, Irene. It has been a really long day. Feeling a little fried around the edges and some out up the middle too. <laughs> hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Makers. I'm Henry. And I'm Irene. She's Irene. I am. Last time I checked. <laughs> Still. We're going to answer a couple of questions that we've had on a couple of our recent shows. What do we use dill seed and dill weed for? I happen to have a sample <laughs> of dill weed. Hmm. Maybe I hold it up against you. <laughs> Smells great. Smells good. Yeah. Dill weed is just the fronds from the dill plant itself. It the, has the leaves on it. It makes a really nice fresh herb. It also makes a great dried herb. Mm -hmm. Now what do we use that for? Well Irene makes some really delicious salads for me. One of them is this creamy dill cucumber salad. This is the end of our cucumbers probably for the year. Right. Um, the cucumbers may or may not, the plants may or may not produce anymore. We cut them back somewhat. They're going to get a shot of fertilizer tomorrow. We'll see if they do in much. It's, the days are getting short. The plants are getting old. You know, they have produced a huge volume of, of cucumbers. This all, year. all summer long, yeah. we had fresh cucumbers every single day. I couldn't eat them all. Mm -mm. No, I'm, I did can some of them as pickles. So, hmm, that was a great salad. We use the dill weed for making this creamy cucumber salad. Mm -hmm. But I like to use dill weed to make gravlax. Now, my mother's family is from Scandinavia, specifically Norway. When I was in Denmark many years ago, I spent a lot of time with my salesman there, and we used to go to several buffets that had gravlax for breakfast. And gravlax is just a piece of salmon that's cut to a specific thickness. It has sugar, salt, and fresh dill, and then it's pressed. It's pressed over a number of days so it becomes very, th well, not very thin, but relatively thin. It's delicious, absolutely delicious, but Irene doesn't like it. Uh, my problem is I love salmon fresh. I don't usually like, I mean, I could even eat it raw in sushi, but I don't usually like it when you smoke it or do anything else funky with it. Or cure, or the or uh, cure sugar it, salt yeah. cure. Because that's a, that's, a, that's a standard cure when you're using salt and you're using sugar you're inhibiting the ability for the thing to spoil. It's the same principles we use in all our other saving of fruit and veg. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it wouldn't be Scandinavia if you didn't sometimes put some vodka in it. And so I actually sometimes add vodka to my gravlax. Right. Now, what, what do we use dill seed for, Irene? Um, mostly the dill seed is used in pickles, various kinds of pickles, whether it's a fresh pickle that you just set up and let, ferment in the back of the fridge, or if it's something that I can, all the, I don't think there's a single pickle relish or, well, not the relish recipes, but a, a single pickle recipe, whether it's zucchini or cucumber or anything else that doesn't use dill seeds in it. That's probably the most common use for dill seeds. Well, you also make an End of season, end of garden. Right, that's a mishmash of different kinds of veggies. And that has brown sugar in it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I don't think it has any dill seed. That may not. That may. That probably is the only one that I make. It's got all kinds of other strange things in it that are not used in, delicious. The, in most of the pickles. Yeah. It's absolutely delicious. That may be one of them that uses the, the, whole, the whole allspice, too. The other question that we had was about fermenting tomato seeds. And there's a reason why... I have a jar 
wrapped up in a towel inside a Ziploc bag. It's because I told him not to spill it on the rug. <laughs> this, this stuff is not exactly the worst smelling. Oh, no, okay. no. Rotten potatoes are way worse. There's lots of more things that are way worse than that. The but it's funky. Open. You know, it, it's, it's got that I've been fermented funk that you get with tomatoes and other veggies. I'm going to hold the towel here just in case. In case you slurp. Hold on to the bag, please. Thank you. Now I have a number of Amanda orange tomatoes in here, and I'm a little behind schedule on getting the, toma the tomato seeds pulled out of this fruit. But what I've done is I've put, ooh, it's bubbling. It ferments. And we'll, and we'll talk about that here in a second. It's why the lid is normally left on loosely because you don't want to overpressurize your jar and have it explode and throw goo all over your kitchen. <laughs> so normally what I'll do is pull the gelatinous mass that's in between the ribs of the tomato that actually holds the seeds and I'll put that into the jar. Now what I've done here because I was running out of time and needed to do something with these tomatoes before they went splat all over the counter was I just put them here in the jar. And what I'll normally do is come in and give this a shake. I'm not going to do it in here because I don't want to get a splurp on the floor because it's not going to smell good. Mm -mm. And, and, and wifey will be, uh, be not happy. <laughs> Henry won't be happy. He'll be cleaning the rug. <laughs> now I'm not going to open this, but I will do another show probably later this week on how I normally do this, where I pull the goo out with the tomato seeds in it. Let's put this back in the bag before we have an accident. Yeah, we, this is not a washable floor plate, particularly. There we go. Thank you. We'll put this down out of the way. But all it does is make the goo come off really easily. Yeah, so if you think about tomatoes in the wild and in nature when we're not picking them, they'll fall off the vine, they'll land on the ground, and they will start to decompose. Right. Sometimes they'll split as they start to ferment, and they'll just sort of explode on themselves a little bit. And critters will come along and chomp on them or whatever, but then they just kind of go splooge. And that little bit of fermentation helps the seeds escape the goo. <laughs> what we're doing here is we're artificially creating a fermentation process so that I can remove the seeds from the goo. And what I'll do when this is fermented enough, that is, it's actually... Okay, so we call it fermentation. It's decomposing. Right. It's starting to rot. And it, but it is a form of fermentation. I mean, you can smell the fact that it's fermenting. And it doesn't smell dramatically different than a lot of other things that people do on purpose to create something that they're going to eat later. Yeah, now, <laughs> tomatoes are a fruit. It has a, they have a fair amount of sugar in them. So all the things that normally will eat sugar, like yeast and bacteria, will do their work mm -hmm. on these tomatoes. It doesn't smell good when you're doing it, so I put it out of the way. If you're doing it quickly, sometimes like when I have tomatoes that'll split on the counter, especially at this time of year, it's kind of that end of season and the, the tomatoes want more than anything else to, to make tomato seeds. <laughs> you can actually smell the alcohol in it, which doesn't bother me because we brew too. So, you know, it's like, I recognize that smell. That's alcohol. Doesn't mean now I know people make tomato wine. I have never made tomato wine. My mother's made tomato wine. Yeah, I have never made tomatoes. We've but, never had that many tomatoes that we could afford to waste them. Yeah, the last time I remember tomato wine was when we lived in Maryland, and I was young. I think I was in second grade, and my mother made some tomato wine. You know, I learned how to brew at my mother's knee. Tomatoes are one of those fruits that you do need to do something to separate the seeds out. There's other vegetables and fruits that you don't have that same issue. For example, dill. Now, Irene will let the dill grow wherever it wants to in the yard, in the garden, because it's going to come on at different times throughout the year so that she has fresh dill that's continuing to arrive all summer long. Right, and I don't try and get every last seed. Um, the big, beautiful, perfect seed heads will get harvested a lot of times, but 
even with those, sometimes you can see that there's a few seeds missing. I just don't worry about that sort of thing because I like the fact that it's popping up in areas. I don't have to try and I've had, I've had mixed results with trying to start dill on purpose and then transplant it and stuff like that. But if I just let some dill seed be out there, it'll do its own thing as long as it's in a bed that's being watered or right next to the bed so that it gets a little bit of like leakage or sloppage or something uh, or decondensation even. It's fine. Yeah, and there's a lot of different ways to save seeds. We will cut the heads off of dill. I'll cut the, the uh, old blossoms that are completely cured and from our uh, marigolds and put them into a paper bag mm -hmm. and wait for them to spring open and then rattle the bag and pull the husks out. Right. And then use the seeds. Right. If you've been watching for a while this past summer, I showed the fact that I have a basket in the corner of the kitchen on top of one of the shelves there. And when I bring in heads of dill, I just toss them into the, you know, the seed heads. I just toss them into that basket. And every couple of weeks, you know, I keep kind of a mental, you know, peek at it to see how many are in there. And all I'm doing is I'm making sure they get bone dry. We live in a dry enough climate that I don't have to do anything to make them get dry. They will simply dry out by themselves, but I want to make sure they're really dry before I jar them up. Because if they're not dry, they can spoil and the trick to keeping seeds functional <laughs> is to keep them dry so i just leave that over there for a couple of weeks usually and by the time two or three weeks have gone by i usually have the the basket is starting to mound up and then i'll i'll take the time to and they make such a mess because they spring all over the place goodbye irene so until <laughs> next time be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because we have a lot going on we have too much going on, Irene. Way too much going on. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll get time to sit down before Christmas. Anyway, nah. <laughs> it's overrated, right? <laughs> Highly overrated. Highly overrated. That, that V thing that people do, that vacation. I've heard no. that. I, I'm not sure what that means, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, so until next time. Bye. bye. Keep brainstorming. She is. <laughs> I have to figure out how I'm going to fit all this in. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. Mmm, they sound nice and crunchy. Good. And creamy, too. Mm hmm The advantage of using old cucumbers is they're not as damp. So they actually make a, keep a crunchier salad. Thanks for making it. No problem. <laughs>